Hi, everybody. This is Hanu the Hunt and and welcome to Hanu's Horrible Horror Podcast or something. We haven't actually decided the title yet. I'm Hanu, and joining me is Retro Kaiser. Yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Sound like Yogi Bear all of a sudden. Hey, boo, boo, what are we reading today? <laughs> <laughs> oh, a reading bear, is it? Okay. So you might know, hey, and it's, so, Retro Kaiser's back uh, on the channel after a long while. And you might remember that me and Kaiser used to have, uh, we still have, it's, it hasn't gone anywhere, but we used to have two horror-related podcasts, the Kaiser and Hyundai YouTube podcast and the Unnamed Horror uh, both were podcasts uh, where we read horror stories, in the other one from Edgar Allan Poe, in the other one from... H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, uh, where I specifically, you know, read the stories, and Kaiser would make sound effects, and... Yep, just like Police Academy, but not funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're, 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 they're great. They're wonderful. Uh, but, uh, we haven't done this... Uh, we Last year, we uh, finished the, the trilogy of, um, of Unnamed Horrors, which was the Call of Cthulhu, but people might remember that uh, in our second ever, well, maybe you don't remember, but it's, so that's why I'm reminding you. In our second ever Unnamed Horror, I actually said that I had written a story uh, inspired by Lovecraft, which I teased we might do this uh, horror podcast treatment to. Today, we're not reading that story. <laughs> instead, we're Jeez. reading. Yes, <laughs> instead we're reading another story which I read, which I wrote shortly after writing that first one. Well, not shortly. I actually, I think I wrote this one. Yeah, I wrote the f previous one in 2020, and I think I wrote this one um, last year. Unfortunately, I don't have the date for this because I'm reading this off of my uh, Google Drive um, today. Um, the original is on my hard hard drive for me for my old computer. So, uh, so today we're basically going to do the same thing. Uh, and Kaiser, on top of doing, you know, funny noises, he's also going to get to criticize my creative writing today. Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yes, and I'm, I'm already going to give you some easy, easy pickings. I, I notice literally as the story's sitting in front of me on the second line, there's a typo. <laughs> Sorry, second sentence. <laughs> or not a typo. Not like I, you're I, sending me a copy to read. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to notice any of the typos unless you accidentally said he pulled out his blood instead of blade. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, it's in a in a Google Drive. I could I could just share this with you. A few moments later. Ooh, I'm reading his work now. It says he's his hard cannon exploded into a love for. Oh, ha, no. He's, I know he's, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously joking, but he, he she's, uh, he, he should see some of the less publishable stuff that I have written. <laughs> uh, okay, but, all right, so, um, so I have written two of these sort of Lovecraftian stories, um, and actually, I've only really had one other person ever read these, is Ken, aka Aqual on Game Reviews, and, dun, 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 dun. yeah. <laughs> Which funny? Did you see? Did you see my uh, Adams Family video? Um, that was I saw that live on Twitch. Oh yeah, so you saw me play it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, mm. it's funny because I did this spring. I actually did like a homage to Aqualung. So I, so I'm just you know I've just become a fucking hack. I'm just copying everybody now. But <laughs> welcome to the club. Yeah, but any hoot. Uh, uh, he's read both of these stories and he liked this one much better than the than the other one as well. And I think I do agree with him uh, that I think in the first story uh, that I wrote, uh, which was called, um, I already forgot, uh, Shadow of the Titan. Mm -hmm. I think I, I, I nailed the Lovecraftian mood in that, but I think I nailed the Lovecraftian horror better with this one. So, uh, so anywho, the story that we are going to do today is called The Creature in the Basement. Very Clef Lovecraftian title as well. Uh... uh so get Necronomicon esque vibes from reading that title. All right, here we go. Since starting mm -hmm. my career in the field of biological studies, I had immense admiration for Doctor Steinmeier. Hello. <laughs> Keep note of that voice; it'll come back. Uh, 
In the 1930s, Henry Steinmeier had been one of the pioneers of the theory of quam mortis vitale, a theory, yes. <laughs> a theory which posited that, against the commonly accepted views of the scientific world, the body maintained within it the potential for life even after the tissue had seemingly ceased to live. And there's the, the first typo. Uh, I, I, I used the wrong seats there, not the one that you're supposed to, the, the one with the Z. <laughs> I, I realized just as I was reading it. I have not proofread these, by the way, so there probably are going to be a couple of uh, typos along the way. I had, of course, heard the outlandish stories of his experiments, how... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> how he would make organs pulsate and severed limbs move... <laughs> yes. And severed limbs move within his laboratory to the horrified astonishment of the freshmen. Uh, <gasps> however, there were... However, these were mere parlor tricks in comparison to his <laughs> ultimate goal. <laughs> yes and which he tried in vain for a decade to convince his superiors at the University of Massachusetts to take seriously. Unable to find doctorate students willing to stake their reputation on Steinmeier's largely untested ideas, I was finally directed to the trail of the master himself. This, Thank you. Yes, this all began in the autumn of 1963. So we're, we're kind of outside the ballpark of typical Lovecraft stories here, but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the this bizarre... is sort of like um, Lovecraft in the future. I was expecting I was expecting a Beatles reference there at least, but <laughs> okay. But I never wanna mind. hold your dead hand. <laughs> <laughs> and the bizarre events transpired thereafter. The grizzled doctor had <laughs> <laughs> had long since disappeared from the limelight of academia, and. Or academia. I, I, I think, yeah, I, I, academia Academia sounds like a nut, uh, but I'm tish. Okay. That, that sounds like a bad dance from the 90s. That's, that's, sorry, that was a dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> and his last known publication, some say published without his permission. Uh, oh, God, that's a typo. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think there's a missing was there. I'm trying to make sense of my own sentence now. His last publication, some say published without his permission, was back in 1949. <clears throat> after intense... Uh, after intense queries from the uh, from those members of the faculty who were still at the university and who had indeed met him, I was finally able to gather a clue which finally led me to his barren estate at the outskirts of a miserable little town called Innsboro. It was truly a town mm. which time seemed to have forgotten, the miserable little brick town showing the lingering marks of both the Prohibition and the Great Depression. Damn. <laughs> That's all you had to say. <laughs> yeah. And also... I mean, it, yep. being suffering without job and without alcohol, that's pretty damn depressing. <laughs> well, they both had ended, but yeah. And incidentally, uh, Innsboro is the setting of my other story. So, so this is basically my attempt at, <laughs> at creating my own little uh, Arkham uh, in, this, in these stories. Yeah, all right. The Steinmeier estate was a dismal two-story mansion located at the edges of the Innsboro of Innsboro's many darkened pinewood areas. Woo -hoo. All right, I hope it, it comes out. Yeah, first of all, there was a missing article in one place and then an unnecessary article before Innsboro. Yeah. I first contacted the good doctor via mail and expressed my desire to become his laboratory assistant. I mentioned exhaustively in my letter his 1938 experiment in which he had seemingly managed to resuscitate a dead beagle. Ruff, ruff. This experiment had caused much controversy, as the seeming cause of death as well as the apparent success of the experiment were highly in doubt. Eventually, Henry agreed to meet me in person. He warned me that he could not provide me with grand accommodation, for the years of living in isolation had left him with limited funds. I cared not, as it was an honor to simply be in his presence. Time we know he's not a gold digger. <laughs> yeah. 
Time had not been kind to him. He walked, lurched, with a ter- <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I was half expecting a you rang from there, but okay. <laughs> I should have done that. Yeah. <laughs> you rang. Yeah. He walked and lurched with a terrible hunch rising from his back like an evil... Boing, 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 boing. Like an evil hill. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was pretty lazy of me. <laughs> An evil hill. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ha, ha, I'm a hill and I'm evil. Yeah. I t- uh, t- well, that boy ain't right. I'm evil, Hank Hill. <laughs> what? You know what? I immediately thought of a much better, uh, uh, um, not not a not a synonym, but I should have said like an evil Golgotha. Uh, so something like that. Or maybe that would have been that just too much. Sounds like something you. That just sounds like something you order from Taco Bell. <laughs> really, dude? You you don't know what Golgotha <laughs> is. <laughs> That's, I've not heard that word before. Funny enough, that's that's the hill that Jesus was crucified on. Ah, it's okay. it's Hebrew and it means uh, a skull. Actually, yeah. Sorry. Um, okay, uh, his hair had turned gray and was in such disarray. It reminded me of a mane uh, <laughs> of some wild animal more than hair. That's a good uh, animal sound. Whatever the hell it was. <laughs> That was, that was a lion. Okay. <laughs> His mustache was, however, bushy, and as <laughs> and as recognizable as it had been in the old photographs I had uh, managed to scrounge up from the university. The doctor limited his habitation to the ground floor of the old family manor. The second floor, in his own words, was not safe to enter, and he merely stored old furniture and other refuse up there, which he was too old and feeble to carry off the property. There's a bit of a logical fallacy there. Like, I I have to assume that this refuse was already on the second floor. Otherwise, you know, he would have had to drag it up (laughs) the stairs. (laughs) Um... Any, uh, yeah. The house had electric lights, but was still somehow incredibly. <laughs> but was still somehow incredibly dark, dusty, and smelled of mold. Ugh. He slept in a shambled bed in the manor's western wing. The kitchen was crude and dirty, but presented the bare necessities of preparing meals. His library was dreary, but relatively well organized. My accommodation was a small vacant room just opposite to the stairs. From all appearances, it seemed to have been once a closet of some description, but now filled largely by a small cot bed of sorts. No electric light shone its light therein, so I was forced to light my small dwelling by candle. And yes, I did write that whole sentence pretty much just to (laughs) emulate, like, (laughs) Lovecraft's language. (laughs) I, I'm th- I'm thinking I did that kind of in- intentionally because you know Lo- Lovecraft loved to do like you know you th- uh, the no longer used forms of like verbs and stuff yeah so okay mm-hmm. moving on his laboratory on the other hand resided in the basement and was a magnificent sight whoa despite his advanced age Steinmeier kept his laboratory sorry. <laughs> Steinmeier kept his laboratory in almost better condition than his living quarters. Vials and bottles were organized meticulously. His work, sorry, his work surfaces clean. His laboratory coats lined cleanly. His large cabinet of dangerous chemicals was locked and sturdy. I don't want you drinking my chemicals now. (laughs) My curiosity on this first visit was aroused by what appeared to be a large tub or perhaps more akin to a large aquarium. I didn't pry as to its purpose at this time. If this was a Lovecraft Lovecraft story, it'd probably end with, I ejaculated. (laughs) I was half expecting, like, you know, another doing sound effect with the aroused. (laughs) All right. Oh, please, I'm not that predictable. (laughs) But you have done it before. That's why I was expecting it. Oh, yes. Yes, all right. First few... The, uh, the first few weeks of living at, at the Steinmeier estate was barely anything worth writing home about. Though I spoke a great deal for my ideas for experiments, the doctor simply had me organize his textbooks and equipment, making, yes, making sure they were all in good order. 
I was not particularly impressed by this use of my skills, but decided to do as the old man asked of me. It was not until a month since moving into, this, into his dismal home that I first saw him conduct an experiment. A yes, a raccoon had died and was rotting on the estate's yard, which itself was in, the, uh, was in quite the disarray. I asked first if he wished me to dispose of the corpse, but to my... No, I'm saving that for dinner. <laughs> Raccoon stew, yum. <laughs> <laughs> but, my but to my surprise, Henry expressed an interest to bring the poor dead creature to his laboratory. He asked me to place the carcass into the vat of water and bring it down. Uh, <laughs> into a vat of water. Yeah, sorry, uh, I, I read that incorrectly. <clears throat> I found the task somewhat difficult as the corpse had a propensity to float to the surface of the water. It was then that I saw... Got a floater. Yeah. <laughs> it, was then, it was then that I saw for the first time at what swiftness my mentor was capable of moving. Zoom! <laughs> he busied himself pouring chemicals into the large aquarium. After some minutes... Of this, as well as checking the temperature of the glass case, he told me Ooh. to. Yes, he told me to pour the creature and water it uh, in with the chemicals. At first, plop, 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 plop. yes. At first, nothing happened, though I noticed a displeasing odor as well, Ooh. as well as some form of colored fumes rising from the tub. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> Noisy fumes. <laughs> <laughs> Steinmeier looked grimly at the dead creature and said, uh, Oh, God, now I, I forgot I, he did have dialogue. Okay. Do you want to do... Hey, mm. you, you gave him a voice. Do you want to want to read his dialogue? <laughs> I just gave him the Ray Romano voice. Okay. Ooh, it's, it's not very fresh, but we shall check it in the, mor in the morning. I was not entirely sure why the wait was necessary, but indeed we did so. The following morning, as I entered the laboratory freshly from having eaten breakfast, I saw some... <laughs> which I scarfed down like some animal. <laughs> I saw something which seemed impossible. The raccoon was no longer in the tub, but was now lying on the floor in a position that indicated its wish to move. I was stunned further when, going to try to pick it up, the creature suddenly raised its head and continued to crawl across the floor. Its rear legs were broken, and its gushing red... Ah! Yes, and its crushing red entrails were being smeared on the doctor's floor. I yelled in amazement. Oh. Yes, I yelled in amazement. Ah! <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> At which point the doctor hobbled down the stairs. <laughs> Sound like it just fell down the stairs. <laughs> yes, that lurch is really like <laughs> keeping him down. <laughs> Picking up the creature from the floor, he put it back in the tub, closing a large lid and suddenly filling the case with water. I saw, yes, I saw as the raccoon struggled to move in the water and suddenly began to dissolve in the tub, turned what. <clears throat> Sorry, and and began to dissolve in the tub turned watery prison. Ah, the chemicals melting. Yes, the chemicals remixed, and the raccoon suddenly. Walker, sudden, walker, walker. <laughs> and the raccoon suddenly liquefied before my very eyes. I think I'm starting to think it was a wicked witch. <laughs> oh, what a world! What a world! <laughs> said the raccoon. <laughs> 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 Having witnessed this, I had no doubt that Steinmeier's quam mortis vitale was not just an unproven hypothesis. However, the doctor then pointed to this chemical bath, to his chemical bath, and explained to me the problem with his chemical resurrection. I should have let the other chemical out of that. That was a poor sentence. Uh, Leaving the raccoon in this mixture re-excited its dead cells and allowed it to move again with agency. But, as could be seen from the entrails spewing, the process was not capable of healing the mortal wounds which killed the subject. 
the f and further exposure to the chemicals had a tendency of causing total breakdown of the cells, which is why the poor forest creature was no longer anything but a mass of dead gelatinous matter. That's supposed to be jelly shaking. <laughs> I'm not. I'm now just imagining that lady on the plane in airplane. <laughs> <laughs> you know which one you're, uh, I'm talking about. I know, I know what you're on about. <laughs> yes. My thoughts, however, were excited. Boing, 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 boing. Thank you. I was, I was hoping for that one. I began theorizing with Henry on the possibility of closing wounds and healing them before uh, the chemicals... Smash! <laughs> of closing wounds and healing them before the chemical resurrection, solving the inevitable problem of the body's decay upon its reanimation. His eyes seemed to light up with the prospect. <laughs> and explode, apparently. <laughs> we needed a creature which was large and healthy enough to try this theory on. Rats and mice, though easy to attain, proved too fragile. Their cuts, no matter... <sighs> Yeah, <clears throat> their cuts, no matter how minuscule, seem to become agitated by the chemicals. Ma <laughs> make the cuts too small, and the chemical reaction simply rip the tissue further, making them <laughs> making them larger. Had the unintended effect of making the rats explode. <laughs> I found this somewhat humorous, <laughs> <laughs> though Steinmeier didn't share this sentiment. I don't think that's funny at all. <laughs> we finally settled on a stray cat, which had, which had been roaming the estate for several days. I fashioned a trap from a small crossbow and snared the precocious... <laughs> and snared the precocious pussy after three days of tracking. <laughs> yes. <laughs> at last, our experiment showed promise. Using a healing agent and stitching together the cat's wounds, we then submerged it in Henry's tub of life-returning chemicals. <laughs> Success! Yay! The cat began meowing after merely an hour of submersion. Meow, 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 meow. Could you do more like an underwater meowing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, that's great. <laughs> The crossbow's arrow had pierced the poor pussy's eye, and so Ow! I, and so I took to calling it Cyclops, as it's me. <laughs> good, good reference. As it became for a time our housemate. Uh, you you can spot uh, you know a slight Edgar Allan Poe you know ref you know uh, inspiration mm -hmm. there with the one-eyed cat though. <clears throat> oh yeah. Unfortunately, our experiments soon began showing their darker side. <laughs> Something in our success must have triggered Steinmeier's excitement. Boing, 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 boing. <laughs> As he kept returning from walks with pigeons, drowned, pu ooh, ooh. drowned puppies, ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh. squirrels, cheep, cheep. <laughs> and other small creatures to dip in his resurrection, resurrecting pool. However, none were as substantial as Cyclops, and all, and all only survived for a few hours or became a red blob soon after, like our earlier gutted rats. Woof. <laughs> Just a woof. <laughs> no, I said woof. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Cyclops himself began acting strangely. Where... Da, 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 da. Whereas the fastidious feline had been loving and kind soon after its resurrection, its temper began to change. I made, ah, leave me alone. I, ah. made, I made note of the fact that Cyclops kept trying to catch mice, but seemed utterly incapable of eating them. We soon noticed that he also didn't defecate, and this worried us until we began noticing a terrible odor. Cyclops began to become more and more irritable. Soon it would only hiss and claw at us when we came near. Scratch. Yes, and I very much began to consider putting the cat out of its misery. Then one night a terrible noise awoke me. A thought and... No, uh, a thought and splat of sorts. 
<laughs> a th- a, two noises. A thud and splat. Plonk. Okay. <laughs> that sounds more like deflating. Yeah. <laughs> em- yeah. Emanating from the kitchen. <laughs> I was horrified. Dinner's done. Yeah. I was hor- <laughs> Oh, boy. Dinner's done. Okay. Ah, uh, when I <laughs> this is not uh, this is not my idea of eating pussy. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, too easy. <laughs> I was horrified to see Cyclops strewn across the floor. The the small bits of food we had given him over the days were were also lying on the floor undigested, while Cyclops's legs and tail were strewn along. Uh, with wet bits of fur. More horrifyingly, Cyclops's upper body and single arm were still clawing along. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have eaten that way for thin mint. <laughs> <laughs> Without hesitation, I took Cyclops down to the resurrection pool and liquefied him. I could simply not. I, I could simply not bear to stare at him. I cleaned the other bit, bits and decided to burn what I could could in the fireplace (laughs) all right that did not sound like a fire sorry all right and now we're getting ready for the big finale uh so yeah we've already had the exploding cat by the way i i i I, I needed to comment on when i said that i considered putting the cat out of its misery like i i clearly just ran out of like i other names for cats because i have the fastidious feline and the Mm -hmm. you know the 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 uh what was it? The perplexed pussy. I don't know. <laughs> the co- the collapsed the collapsed cat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But anyway, let's uh, let's continue. We're 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 nearing the very end of the story now. Before I tell you all now what caused me to escape into the cold February night in panic, I have yet to have told you what Doctor St- what Doctor Henry Steinmeier did with all of these failed experiments. The, resur- the resurrecting gel and the liquefied remains of his subjects were always disposed of into a large tank located at the very back of his basement. The tank was embedded into the ground, and in a touch of morbid humor, the doctor had layered <laughs> the doctor had layered stone around the entryway into a sort of well. Except this was. Except this was a well of death, according to him. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. <laughs> uh, I had tried in vain to type out my report on our experiments. Even though our experiment with Cyclops had been disastrous, the data was valuable enough in my eyes to publish. I became annoyed at my host's unwillingness to document his failed resurrection experiments, and finally began to suspect that this might be partly the reason for his continuous evasion of the scientific publications. It mattered not. I was making good progress and intended to deliver my dissertation that coming spring. But Steinmeier... Yes, but Steinmeier was not satisfied. He demanded a... He demanded a larger creature. A healthier creature. Whoa, kinky. (laughs) The last few days I worked in Steinmeier's lab, I noticed him bringing in chickens. Larger dogs. Woof, woof. And even a calf. Meow. I questioned where he kept finding these creatures. (laughs) Must live near a farm. He's 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 doing great business for some pet shop, clearly. I had suspected for a while that Henry might have resorted to stealing some of his subjects. The calf was the most damning of all, as it was perfectly healthy. Without as much as a word, as soon as Henry had pulled it down the stairs, he sliced... (laughs) (laughs) He sliced its throat open with a knife. I was mortified and watched the poor animal writhe. I... (laughs) I even asked in vain for Henry's permission to strike it dead with a hammer. He seemed utterly unfazed by this. Reviving the calf... Yes. <laughs> Reviving the calf was difficult. Lifting it into the tub was challenging, and we unfortunately... <laughs> and we unfortunately cracked one of the sides, causing a bit of the chemicals to spill out and fill the room with, a no- with the noxious fumes. 
The calf moved a little, but on the count of its throat being wide open, it obviously couldn't move. <clears throat> Trying to dissolve the creature also left us, for the first time, with an excess of bones and guts. Ooh. Pouring the disgusting mixture to the death well proved more challenging than ever. It was at this point I began to truly question the sanity of Steinmeier. Now, mm, I'm questioning the sanity of Steinmeier. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, this failure seemed to have quenched his desire for more experiments for at least a while. He retreated into his bedroom to sulk for several... <laughs> okay. That was not the that was not the retreating noise that I was expecting. <laughs> what the free stooges on retreat sound? Oh boy. <laughs> he retreated into his bedroom to sulk for several days. <laughs> while I tried to quietly go about finishing my report. <laughs> That's a loud way of writing your report. <laughs> yeah. Well actually yeah, it would be because you know if he used a typewriter, yeah. In the evening, yeah. In the evenings, I kept hearing strange noises somewhere on the property, but could not. <laughs> I could not place them. I kept telling myself that it was just the local deer mating outside. <laughs> At that point, I started questioning the sanity of the sound effects man. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was just, just you know. Uh, to be fair, I'm not entirely sure what a deer sound, deer mating sounds like, but uh, I hope it doesn't sound like that. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, or perhaps simply fighting. Uh, yeah, the, the the deer. Yeah. A few days. Yeah. Hello again. <laughs> Uh, deers were f throwing fireballs in the woods. Uh, okay. <laughs> we're, we're, we're writing a completely different story on the side here, definitely. <laughs> a few days after the calf incident, a local Innsboro farmer came to the house asking if, if we had seen any cows on the property. And I want to see my cow. <laughs> and explained that a calf had been stolen. I feigned ignorance successfully enough. I don't does... know where it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the farmer left pro left the property disappointed. It was at this. Oh, where my cow? Oh, I'm disappointed. Uh, <clears throat> it was at this point I had decided to abandon my mentor. Then, Hello. yep. Then the following night, I awoke to noises from the basement. I saw. <laughs> so I saw that Henry was not in his room, and I dreaded the poor and. Uh, and I dreaded what poor animal he had now dragged down with him to the basement. And, uh. <laughs> and that's also a reference to one of our poe cats. Uh, mm -hmm. so the black cat, so, you know, check that one out. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, in the basement, I was horrified to notice that the very crossbow I had used to snare Cyclops and the doctor standing over his glass tub, now with the body of the farmer inside of it. Ooh. Yeah. Steinmeier smiled and cheered. Yahoo! No, no this, is, this is where you get to read his line. I'm trying to find that bloody line. I've lost it. Here we go. Oh, there we go. Yes. The mis Thank you, mysterious ghost of Google. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. Now I've turned to Peter Laurie again. Yeah, success. I got him in there in under a minute. He didn't even see the error. <laughs> As he poured in the last of the chemicals, I swear I could hear a horrifying cacophony of animal cries. <laughs> I was too shocked at the sight to stop him. After a few minutes, there was, m there was some movement. The farmer suddenly began to... Yeah, the farmer suddenly began jittering violently. <laughs> and Stein into a turkey apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and Steinmeier seemed pleased beyond all comprehension. Oh, 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 oh yes. That Ooh. that's until the farmer pounced on him, pushing Steinmeier um. pushing Steinmeier back into his death well. Didn't end up as well as he hoped. Uh, I was I was uh, hoping for at least a scream okay. there. <laughs> okay. Oh! 
Without a second thought, I grabbed a large piece of wood from the fireplace upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> uh, from the fireplace oh, upstairs. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Whoosh. And began striking the farmer furiously. Whack, whack, splat, splat, whack, whack. He, his limbs began giving away like dough being kneed. Flop. <laughs> As I struck him on the head and the chest, Ouch. I, I realized that the volatile chemicals were already eating away at his body, and almost as soon as he seemed to have awoken from death, he had melted into a disgusting pile of rutting guts upon the floor. Ew. <laughs> I'm not cleaning that up. But that was just the start of it. As I looked down into the well to hopefully see and retrieve Henry's body, I saw something utterly terrifying. A man, or sort of a man, staring at me with a dozen or so eyes. It opened its mouth as if to say something, only for rats... Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Only for rats to begin pouring out, and soon, <laughs> and soon something began reaching out from the pool of liquidized corpses, a bony extremity and feral outline of a face. It reached out. Hey! <laughs> it reached out while crying out with hooves at the ends of its arms. <laughs> At this sight, I ran out and away into the night. I was... It, it was freezing and I dared not look back in the fear that the creature might come after me. I woke up in Innsborough Hospital several days later, suffering from frostbite and apparently having been Ouch. in a state of delirium. <laughs> I was very calm delirium there. <laughs> <laughs> the piece of wood I had taken carelessly from the fireplace had apparently started a fire in the laboratory, which the doctor's vile concoctions had ag agitated. When the, Ouch. when the authorities arrived, the house was ablaze and could not be extinguished. They were only able to explore the remains afterwards and found no trace of any bodies, or indeed, of the creature I described. The, dun, dun, dun. the end. All right. <laughs> so, what did you think of that story? Very Lovecraftian. I don't think I went went a little overboard, you know, at the end. But that was kind of the, you know, that was kind of what I was going for there at the, you mm -hmm. know, the the death well and you know the horrors inside. <laughs> I liked it. I definitely noticed some um, ma mainly inspiration from was like the Innsmouth Hotel and um, Reanimator. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's, the, that was kind of my, like, you know, fear as well. You know, it's, it's just, you know, it's just reanimator, but with animals, basically, for the most part. Reanimal, reanimator. Yeah, but I, I wanted the, the, the thing with the, with the story that I really wanted to, you know, express that Steinmeier is a complete fuck up, you know, and he, you know, that his resurrections are just all complete failures. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's not like even, because, you know, the thing with Herbert West is like, you know his experiments also didn't go so well, but no. you know, but you know he had actually ac backfired. Yeah, you know he had in different ways, mind you. Yeah, but he did, ha you know, actually completely resurrect corpses. Uh, yeah, I don't remember like you know they. Uh, oh, oh wait, I do, I do. So, and some of the corpses in his story at least like retained, you know, their, um, you know, their sentience and everything. Because you know the story, you know they come looking for Herbert in the final part of the story. Uh, there's the guy with the uh, the beheaded uh, Air Force captain who you know goes around asking them. And it's, you know they read a news newspaper story about a strange group uh, being seen around town with a guy who with a guy with who, who is clearly wearing a wax head because <laughs> you know he's beheaded. <laughs> And yeah, I definitely like. You can definitely tell like I have not, you know, uh, gone to touch up because some of the language I feel like I, 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 you know, I didn't think about the sentences too hard. Like, uh, like I could have, could have, you know, dressed up the words a little bit more. But I, I think I got the gist of the thing. Like where, where it was like the, um, you know, there was a build up, there was an explanation to everything, and then mm -hmm. horrible shit starts. It was starts a round happening. story. Yes. Yes. I think I also. Middle and an end. Yeah, and I also, you know, I do think I, I tried at least to be like 
at least slightly darkly comical. We had exploding rats mm. and an exploding cat. So, <laughs> you know, and, and, I, and, um, and if case anybody and thinks, like, a, and if know, anybody um, thinks like I, I'm, I'm, I'm being extra cruel to animals, like I, you know, I like cats, you know, and, and I, I like mm. dogs, and you know, the idea there was like, I mean, just because you write a story about exploding cats does not mean that you would explode cats for real. Yeah. Yeah, and I thought it would have been too too cliched of Steinmeier to go like rob a morgue or something like that. That then it would have just been Reanimator again, definitely. So, I like the idea that he's just going into the woods and just grabbing whatever goddamn animal he can find. <laughs> I do know if this was if this were to be made into like a cheesy '60s horror movie, you've already got a perfect title: Zombie Farmer from Next Door. So, <laughs> zombie farmer. <laughs> the the implication being that he is. Uh, farming zombies he's not the farmer itself is not a zombie or except except he sort of sort of was you know there's double work. double meaning hey way, actually yeah this yeah. yeah that's a great title it works both ways actually <laughs> <laughs> we, we should call that <laughs> we should call that the the podcast episode the podcast name as well the zombie farmer from next door <laughs> <laughs> funny enough i have In 3d Funny enough, I have I have actually uh, written the story a long time ago about a guy turning into a zombie, but that was one that was one it was in Finnish. I, I th th that's the thing that I was like the calf part, like I was a little bit worried, like that that's where the where we're almost delving into situational comedy until you know it gets mm -hmm. really pretty horrible, like yeah, like dude, are you seriously like gonna I, bring in an elephant? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's if if I had let this like you know insane story keep going. I mean, he would the bat mm -hmm. would have been too tiny because I, we, the implication mm -hmm. is that it's just big enough for a grown man to fit in. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You did not you did not ask where he got the crossbow, did did you? <laughs> I assume he just had it by the fireplace. Yeah, no, but yeah, but you know where where why why does this does this doctor living in a, in a decrepit estate in the middle of nowhere. Why does he have a crossbow to begin with? <laughs> Just in case he needs to kill someone. I, well, I mean, he, 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 the story is supposed to be said in the U.S., so, you know, he could get a gun. But uh, I, 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 guess, I guess that was my loving little nod. Again, we're, we're looking at the, uh, uh, you know, to his Germanic past, because Steinmeier is obviously, you know, a uh... German last name. And, uh, yeah, so <laughs> maybe he was a hunter in his youth. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, so Innsboro, uh, that's, the, that's the setting of my other story, which is the Shadow of the Titan. And it, it, it takes, uh, it, it actually, it, it's a much more closer look into what, what goes on in that town that bears the marks of both the uh, Prohibition and the Great Depression. I think it's set, I, th I, I forget, I think that one was set in the 50s, so, you know, pretty close to this one. But uh, my idea was, I, I actually planned to write a third story that would have been set in Innsboro. It would have been a follow-up to the other story, but I, uh, I never really got around to it. Uh, so any other comments? Not really. Okay, well, I guess we're uh, going to... Unless, um, unless you allow me to make a final pun. A final pun, sure. Yep. With the end of the story... At least we know all was well for that creature. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of left it a little bit vague what goes <laughs> on or if the creature actually, like, you know, was following him. The idea was yeah, just... Yeah, like... because he could have just been high off the fumes as well, as you mentioned. It did leak out. Ah, yeah. Well, actually, I didn't... Need... I wasn't thinking about that. Like, I was, I was thinking very literally there is something... something goes on with that you know because henry wasn't dead when he was got thrown into the vat mm -hmm. so the idea was that there was this weird chemical reaction and he began to fuse with all the animal parts that were liquefied in there so we're doing a so i was thinking that more in a more uh literal body horror sense but actually uh, what, what uh, you said yes but what you were saying yeah so i do think that the you know it's possible that that weird uh fusion animal creature uh, did pe die in the fire, but it's also possible that it's just trapped in the tank still uh, under underground. Mm -hmm. So that's it's a bit it's a bit ambiguous. So I I, I hadn't thought about it like that far ahead. Uh, Good because it leaves room for sequels. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but if if you have nothing else to add here, I guess we'll end the podcast there. Thank you for listening to this mm. uh, our reading and sound effect making of the <laughs> the base. 
the creature in the basement. Uh, a story written by yours truly, and thank you for Kaiser for making those excellent sound effects again. No problem. Uh, yes, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.